disabled to me because of uh, a lack of knowledge and to uh, Damien's point and Christopher's point, a lack of education. Um, when I realized it was just a bunch of simple programmatic codings uh, that needed to go into a digital platform to make it user-friendly, um, it just seemed obvious to me. So we set our sights on finding ways to uh, expand our mission of inspiring accessibility for people of all abilities. Even though we call our organization My Blind Spot, a blind spot is more about what we have over our right shoulder when we drive, at least in the United States. The UK it might be a left blind spot, I don't know. But um, I think everybody has one big blind spot. And it's more about the universal approach to true inclusion. And that is, that is something I have taken to heart very committedly and uh, very passionately thanks to the, the guidance and um, oversight from um, Axel. And uh, we believe that access to the right tools promotes ability and restores infinite possibilities in people's lives. And part of that has to do with the G3 ICT IAAP and the uh, collection of resources and the uh, CPAT exams that we offer. My blind spot was honored and privileged to have been a founding member. Our fledgling organization had just started out and we saw the value, the importance of the collaborations and the sharing of information. Um, and Preeti had asked before about Damien's ability to have the information open source. Work on that, it's important. Your good work can't sit on a shelf in a university. It must be shared widely. And um, Christopher's right, these, these educational components um, are very important. Why did we take that? We have about three people on mm -hmm. our staff now who have, um, and we only, we have 15 individuals working for us all over the country. We have no less than 60 beta testers possibly access into a few hundred once we really open up our doors all over the world. Um, the importance is if we're going to walk the walk, we have to talk the talk. I believe that uh, the more certifications and accreditations all of the people in the uh, entire industry of accessibility professionals, uh, the more we have our credentials in alignment, we have a standard understanding and appreciation for coding. We approach it in a universal sense as opposed to the splintered approaches of the past where one company approached it one way and the other. Uh, it's a reinforcement of the standards, it's a reinforcement of the, the core values that the IAAP brings to the table. And as an educator, having uh, access to the knowledge to, um, even though I know it's not what we walk out with our hands, but what we carry around with in our heads that counts, having that piece of paper is what uh, allows us to flow seamlessly from one corporation to another to assist them. Um, and being a stakeholder in the outcomes, I'm not as, maybe I'm intelligent, but not as proficient as my esteemed colleagues on the board here, but I'm, I'm their worst nightmare. <laughs> I'm the one who gets upset when I can't use my computer or I can't access an app or I can't access uh, programming of any sorts on television. Um, and. My, my business partner in crime over here has taken the baseball bats away from me so I don't <laughs> break anything because I get upset. But um, when I found that there were ob obstacles to people who are print disabled, who are blind, I mean, and print disabilities go beyond just blindness. It's people uh, who have dyslexia, like Christopher, people who have a mobility impairment, who can't use a mouse or a keyboard, um, sensory loss of any magnitude, um, traumatic brain injuries, cognitive issues. So it's, it's a real, uh, uh, and aging. Again, we keep forgetting that to, to uh, Ambassador Geico's point at the beginning, the aging population, unfortunately, as we get older, we become disabled. You know, I don't think that anybody would welcome an invitation to join this community, but um, it's got some very esteemed people, very esteemed colleagues like Richard Branson, Steve Wynn, Cher, Edison, Einstein, Harriet Tubman, Michael J. Fox, um, Bach, Beethoven. Just imagine if you don't focus on creating these digital inclusive environments, you might be quelling the next genius of the millennial generation who could take us to infinity and beyond. <laughs> so.
But um, yeah, so I think it's important. We, we went to a lot of the corporations, and I think this is where um, the things I've walked away from our, we just got back from a conference that, uh, again, was spearheaded by the G3 ICT and uh, Ambassador Gekos, is the M Enabling Conference. And the running theme there was collaborations, sharing of information. If you take a look at what we've done with cancer worldwide, we've shared information. Doctors and scientists and uh, pharmaceutical companies and universities and medical centers are no longer running as individuals to the finish line. They're running together in, 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 in a lockstep, in, in locked arms. And I think if we do the same thing for inclusive digital design, the 1.3 billion people, which I happen to now say, uh, Ambassador, I say uh, 3.6 billion friends and family and people impacted by disabilities because we are friends and family. And if we just stop and wonder who we have in our immediate circle who might not be able to use a mouse or a keyboard or read a screen, you'll find that there's somebody in your family. And we have to be compassionately empathetic about incorporating inclusive inclusiveness period in all we do because we might be having to deal with our spouse not being able to access an environment or our child or our mother or father and I don't think any one of us in this room today or anybody around the world would ever want to be responsible for denying anyone they love access and in the UN we're one big family so we have to understand that we're all brothers and sisters and we need to work collectively to make sure we all can contribute equally to our global society. Thank you, Albert. Your passion never ceases to amaze me. Um, 